Now that you are familiar with the aircraft, let's begin instruction on one of the most difficult tasks of flying any aircraft, landing. The training segments to follow will cover the procedures and techniques you need to get back on the ground. We'll go over HUD displays, instruments, and the crucial points of speed control and angle of attack. We'll cover the steps to get you into the groove, including setting up for a visual landing. Follow the training material, then give it a try in the training missions. All the skills you develop at this point will come into play in the next section, carrier operations. You'll use a number of displays for landing, including the altitude and airspeed indicator, the instrument landing system, or ILS, the vertical speed readout, and the angle of attack readout and indexer. Altitude readout is critical as you set up the approach. Select the radar altimeter for display on the HUD by, by pressing Control A. This gives you a readout of height above ground instead of height above sea level. The ILS aids you in landing the aircraft under any condition. The ILS is displayed as two needles on the HUD. The GSD is the horizontal needle indicating the position of the glide slope. Glide slope is an imaginary horizontal path originating from the touchdown aim point on the runway out to the point the final approach starts. If you are on glide slope, the GSD will cross the velocity vector in the center. Glide slope for the Hornet is approximately 4 degrees. Check glide slope as you start your final approach. At the correct altitude, the runway landing area is 4 degrees below the horizon line in your HUD. To maintain a 4 degree glide slope and land at the correct speed, the velocity vector should be superimposed on the touchdown aim point and proper angle of attack maintained. The vertical needle, or LD, indicates your lineup relative to the aircraft. Lineup is an imaginary vertical line extending from the runway center line out through the final approach. On lineup means your aircraft intersects this line. When on the correct heading, the LD will be covering the runway and crossing the velocity vector. The key to flying the needles is small, smooth corrections to maintain an on and on, or on glide slope and lineup. Moving too fast will cause you to overshoot and chase the needles. The last part of the landing equation is angle of attack. As you may recall from the principles of flight section, angle of attack is the angle the wing makes with the airstream. For the aircraft to maintain a four degree glide slope and land at the correct speed, proper AOA must be maintained. On speed AOA is fixed at 7.6 degrees for the Hornet. This number is derived from airspeed and aircraft weight so airspeed will vary depending on aircraft weight. The AOA indexer located on the left side of the HUD has a quick indicator of proper angle of attack and airspeed as you make your landing approach. If the approach is too slow, the upper chevron of the AOA indexer will light. The chevron indicates the direction your nose and the angle of attack must go to be on speed. To correct, increase your power until airspeed starts to increase. As on speed angle of attack approaches, the center ball will light. Reduce power slightly. If aircraft speed starts to build, the angle of attack indexer will indicate that you are fast by lighting the lower chevron. Reduce power until the airspeed begins to decrease. As the center ball lights, add power to catch the airspeed decrease and maintain on speed flight. Along with speed, nose position affects angle of attack. Climbing with no change in engine thrust decreases speed and you'll begin to slow. Get in the habit of adding power when making large backstick corrections, pushing the nose over to increase airspeed and decrease your AOA. Take out power as you make major nose down corrections. Perform a quick landing checklist as you begin your approach to the airstrip. Gear and flaps are down as confirmed by the indicator lights just left of the IFEI. Hook is up in this case since it's normally only required for carrier operations. The ILS is on displayed in the HUD. As you get closer to the runway, the ILS needles will seem more sensitive. Try not to induce oscillations around the glide slope and lineup by chasing the needles. Once the runway is in sight and you feel confident of your ability to guide the aircraft to touchdown, take over visually. Keep the velocity vector point directly at the center of the landing area. Use small control movements to correct for any drift. Rudders may be used to yaw the nose, but remember to apply opposite stick to prevent rolling, especially in close. 
Continue to scan the angle of attack indexer and adjust the throttles to maintain on speed. Avoid over controlling the aircraft if possible. The Hornet is designed for carrier landings and should not be flared for landing. Adding a little power just prior to touchdown will smooth the landing, but be careful not to add too much. As the aircraft touches down, push the stick to neutral or slightly forward to bring the nose wheel to the deck. Once the nose wheel is on the ground, reduce power to idle and apply the brakes. Once you have the aircraft slowed and under control, taxi off the runway at the nearest taxiway. Keep in mind your Hornet automatically ends the current mission after you land, come to a stop, and shut the engines down. If you don't want to end the current mission, keep the engines idling. The Visual Approach Slope Indicator, or VASI, provides glide slope information to the pilot through a combination of red and white lights positioned near the end of the landing area. The VASI consists of three bars of lights, a downwind bar, a center bar, and an upwind bar. The bottom two bars are used for all tactical aircraft, while the top two are reserved for large transport type aircraft with higher pilot viewpoints. Generally, the upwind bar should be ignored as far as you're concerned. VASI provides glide slope information by filtering light at different angles. The color you see will vary as your aircraft position varies relative to the glide slope. When aligned on glide slope, the bottom two light bars will be red over white. Ignore the top light bar. If you drop below glide slope, both lights will turn red, thus indicating you're too low. Correct by decreasing your descent rate, thus flying up to the glide slope. Then recorrect to fly down glide slope to touchdown. White over white lights indicate you have climbed above the glide slope. You'll need to increase your descent rate until you see red over white. Then adjust your velocity vector to maintain correct glide slope. Establish a heading on the downwind leg. Descend to 600 feet and reduce airspeed to gear speed. At gear speed, roughly 250 knots, drop the gear and flaps and contact the tower. Watch for the abeam position of the carrier or airstrip by looking out the left side with the left arrow key. A beam is when your aircraft's wing line is directly lined up with the approach end of the runway or carrier. Once a beam, count about 20 seconds continuing downwind. As soon as the tower clears you to turn to base or final, start your descent and turn to the base leg. Continue your turn, checking your position as the aircraft passes the 90, which is the point where your aircraft's nose is 90 degrees away from the final approach course. Make the corrections necessary to roll out on lineup, wings level, heading directly for the runway. You will not have much time in the groove to make corrections, so as you roll your wings level, make any corrections necessary to get the velocity vector pointed directly at the landing area. The velocity vector should be about 3 degrees down. If it's not, correct to get the velocity vector in the neighborhood. Maintain on-speed flight, correcting for lineup and glide slope deviations all the way to touchdown.